Hello and welcome back to Food with Life. I am your host, Chapati. We're with our wonderful guest, Colette Baranid, wonderful intuitive counselor, author, educator. And I have a good question for you. We were talking a bit about love, important word, and fear, not such a wanted word. Do you have any techniques or the idea for culturing love and helping our psyche and our physiology say goodbye to fear? Yes, um, but I, I, before we get to the part where love is, because when people are in fear, they can't love, they, it's impossible. It so box it. They box it. it. It becomes very polarized, right? Yes. So, and uh, we have a, I have a process called the Envision process, and we teach people how to neutral, to get very neutral and observant. So we actually go, before we get into the space of compassion, we have to get neutral first. So we distance from fear. So we have a, um, and if anybody's interested in learning about it, they can go to my website, um, micicoach.com, and I train coaches in this process. It's called Envision. And so it works in it, like a form of Jungian active imagination where we show um, the experience that the person's go going through as a landscape that they then take themselves separate mm -hmm. and look at it. Mm -hmm. And so they are no longer experiencing the feelings they are now an observer of those Objective. feelings. Objective. It's a different perspective, yes. exactly. So we, we shift perspective, and then we can go into radical forgiveness, because forgiveness is the, is the bridge to love. Ultimate answer. Exactly. Yes. Many Eastern techniques call about this as a witnessing. Correct. It is a witnessing the technique. Same idea. It is a different uh, term. So I think that's important is how we can, you know, if, if we have someone in our life who is invoking fear in us, or is even possibly causing anger in us? Yes. And we're inventing fear towards them. What is the way to shift? Is there some, some way, particular technique to shift into the heart? So. That you uh, would uh, recognize. Okay, so prayer. You know, oh, so yeah. prayer is a technique that I would say. Um, meditation, do you ever? Me well, meditation? meditation and prayer is definitely it, but in the spot, see, I'm more interested in doing it fast. Okay. You know, like okay. getting there quickly. So, and, and recognizing that you are accountable for every feeling that you have. So mm -hmm. someone else cannot force you to feel anything. Mm -hmm. So it's recognizing that when you are afraid, a part of you needs love first. Yes, so when yes. you are afraid there is so my technique is is to imagine that the fearful part of you is actually very small and is a challenger. Mm -hmm. And that if you can see it, if you just imagine that second, who am I listening to? The voice of my fear. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And then we can say, ah, I am not my fear, but my fear is outside of me. Right. But that fear wants me to love it. Because when we are angry we are coming from a place in us that is wounded. We only get angry when we are triggered, right? right? Yes. We are only get angry when something in us wakes up and yes. says, I am not whole, and you have just proven that I am not whole, right. or I will lose everything because therefore I, do you see? So, so it really goes back to the self saying, I must love that part of me that fears. I must love the part of me that hates. I must love the shadow. I must right, find right. that and do it quickly. And then you can say, do I still feel that way towards that person? You know, and... Yes, and yes. So I have the question, maybe it's too in, intricate, but do you feel that the anger, or if you have anger, let's say, or fear, it could possibly come from a different incarnation? That's a big conversation. Yes, I'm, yes. Not a re I'm not a, um, a past life specialist, but right. I definitely believe it. it's true, right. yes. Right. But regardless of that, there still is a part of you that is experiencing that. Right. Whether it's pa a past incarnation or a future incarnation, since time is not linear, yes. we could be experiencing things simultaneously all the time. Mm -hmm. But we have I, tra I like to translate that into very mainstream language so that the average person can mm -hmm. go, okay, this is too much, I don't, you know, am mm -hmm. I, is this the old warrior in me that's pissed off because uh, you were the person that got mad at me before? I don't care. Right. You know, <laughs> I don't Too much care. Analysis. I don't care. Right, right. You know, it's like, what do we do now? Right, what do we right. do right now? And what am I being invited? Because 
Fear shuts off the thinking mind. Mm. Fear brings us into the amygdala in terms of the mind, right? I know. Right? It shuts yeah. everything down. Poof, poof. We get like that. Like there is no consciousness when we're fear. <laughs> it's it goes yomba. And I say we contract. So what we the answer is like how do we get expansive? Well, through radical forgiveness. You have to go there. And 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 I'm I'm living proof of that. I mean, I was a, I'm a gang rape survivor. I was a drug addict. I'm clean and sober 27 years. I had a wow. hell of a lot of reasons to be a victim. Nice. I could be standing here with the, you know, <laughs> like, "Oh, poor me." I don't see that at all. I I I have dignity and self-love and I I know that people can do bad things to other people. Yes. And that comes from their wound. But it's up to me to let that to release that right. and let not let that not inform my story. Right. A quick last question and we'll be heading off but forgiveness. This seems to be a very pivotal word in the whole mm -hmm. game. You know because the anger or the fear or anything that is not love can indeed involve forgiveness. Yep. And and understanding which can then shift yep. to love. My mom is a Holocaust survivor, and uh, you know, and uh, she. We were raised Christians, just so you know. And my interest is is Buddhism and paganism. I'm, I'm interested in everything. You know, I'm just interested in all of it. I just love spirituality. But um, you know, she came from a family where we learned that the people who were in the camps, they they survived the camps through compassion and forgiveness, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, but you have to first accept. If, you can't get to forgiveness. If you just jump to forgiveness, you end up people pleasing. If you go from here to there, you have to get to the place that I accept that this is going on right now. I accept. I, you have to go radical acceptance first. You cannot change anything that you can't accept. This is the truth for now. Ah, I could have a different perspective on that truth. What in me is responsible for this, if anything? And nothing to do with blaming. And then can we just look at someone realizing that they are wounded and broken and their behavior mm -hmm. has in somehow hurt me? And it takes time, mm -hmm. you know, because we get attached to our anger and our rage and our shame and all of those feelings that we have about others. Yeah, it's a big saying, you know, in spiritual circles, time it's the greatest healer. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And we hope to have you back on the show at some point. Maybe we can do some food recipes. That'd be and, fun. And making some uh, delicious chapatis. <laughs> We're going to make chapati. <laughs> With chapati. <laughs> the food and love, you know. Perfect. It'd be wonderful. Thank you again. My pleasure. I am your host, Chapati. We want to thank our wonderful guest, Colette Baron Reed, for being honored. And we're honored to have her here. I am your host, Chapati. This is Food with Life. We'll see you very soon. Stay and watch more shows. Be well, be happy, and enjoy. Bye bye. Veggies, fruits, nuts, and seeds.